Yeah, you have just as much experience doing this as I do, right? Actually, a little less. A little less. <laughs> I you watched a video few, yesterday. Yeah, you watched a few less videos than I have. <laughs> yeah. It's the first time doing it. We're going to process, I don't know how many there are. I want to say there's around um, somewhere between 40 and 60. We're going to process them out. And just to show everybody that you can do it your first time around, uh, it's not hard to do. If we can do it, anybody can do it. So. Thank you, scratching me. Scratching it. <laughs> Come here. Get your butt over here. Go. Yeah, we got it. We hadn't fed them just like chickens. We hadn't fed the quail in uh, like two days. Yeah, which last time we fed them, this is uh, what is this? This is a Sunday morning. We hadn't fed them since Friday night. Over here. Ow! <laughs> that one didn't want to go in there. Is this the part where Caden comes over and shows us how to do it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for coming out to uh, the channel today. We got our friends here from Here We Go Homestead coming over to... Now this is both of our, we're YouTube University here, um, both of our first times processing Caternix quail. Um, David, our buddy, came over here to help. Uh, he has, you have just as much experience doing this as I do, right? Actually a little less. A little less. <laughs> you I watched the video few, yesterday. Yeah, you watched a few <laughs> less videos than I have. <laughs> yeah. But um, all joking aside, uh, we're relying on our buddy from Kinfolk Farm, Shane. Uh, I talked to him last night about it and watched plenty of his videos on it and a few other videos. So. It's the first time doing it. We're going to process, I don't know how many there are. I want to say there's around um, somewhere between 40 and 60. We're going to process them out. And just to show everybody that you can do it your first time around, uh, it's not hard to do. If we can do it, anybody can do it. So um, some things due to YouTube, we'll cut in and we'll cut out. Some things we can't show you all of it. Uh, but we're going to show you the basics and you'll be able to figure out the rest. So let's get these done today. All right, so main things we've got here, we've got obviously we've got our cleaning buckets. Um, we've got a bucket of clean water and we've got a gut bucket. Now, um, due to YouTube, we can't show the, we won't show the first part, the actual dispatching of the bird. A dispatching is the, you know, the, the, uh, where, the bird, uh, where the bird takes its last breath. But um, there's a couple different ways we've seen it done. Now, um, the, some people will take a club and they will knock the bird out and uh, some people just either way you've got to get the head off the bird okay now all you need to process the bird is a pair of scissors now i've got a pair of poultry shears which technically is overkill for a quail um, he's got a pair of kitchen scissors you can use a pair of just normal freaking scissors whatever you need so uh, he and i are going to cut out here we're both going to dispatch our birds we've got a pair of scissors you'll see the difference when we come back and um, that'll be it once we dispatch them we're going to let them bleed out we'll be back in just we a moment dispatched all the birds we had in this cage and now we're going to go back and do the um, the actual uh, the actual uh, processing of them so once you get it dispatched so we've got a whole group over here that's already been dispatched so you want to go back cut the wings as close to the body as you can it's real easy to find. Yep. So we will cut them right next to the body. And then you clip the legs right here at the, at the joint. And then we have a gut bucket, a rinse bucket for our scissors, and then we have a clean bucket over here. You might not be able to see, but that's where we're actually putting them when we get done. And remember, this is our first time, so that's mainly why we're doing this, to show you guys with no experience that you can do it. So. Once you get the wings clipped close to the body, you get the legs clipped off at the knee joint, basically. Um, grab the bird right here in the middle of the chest. Separate it. You'll see there's the breast right there. Pull the skin out. Henry is very intrigued. Go on, Henry. Go on. Henry, go lay down. Henry, out. Pull the fur off. Pull it over the back legs. Or the skin, feathers, and everything. According to what 
Shane had told me, which does seem true. You've got the, uh, it does seem true. Of course it is. Shane told me. Uh, right there around the vent, feathers will get a little bit tight to pull off. You just keep working them. There you have your clean bird. And you go right along the backbone. Rinse my hand here a little bit. Good pair of scissors, mm -hmm. I think it's very essential. <laughs> Here's your neck. Speed will pick up as you go. As you can see, I'm not too fast, but here's your neck right here. Go right along the backbone, keeping up high. Clip through the ribs. Come out the back side. Go right along the other side. Come on, did you try and throw stuff at me, David? Just quail feet. Okay. Come out the other side. You can run your thumb in here. And there you go. You pull all the guts out with the backbone. Just pull every bit of it out. Again, like I said, guys, this is the first time, so it's not professional but as you can see once you get through you look inside there see if there's any lungs left it looks like the lungs did come out everything came out so we are good to go compared to chickens these are yes similar. there's there's your there's your breast meat uh, we'll throw it in the rinse bucket there's a little bit of feathers and stuff left on here we'll throw it in the rinse bucket uh, it'll go inside there's your breast meat your leg meat people some people don't eat them I see meat on there guys nothing goes to waste on the homestead We'll throw it in the rinse bucket. Um, hey, hey, get the puppy out of it. We'll throw it in the rinse bucket. And uh, final cleanup, in. final inspection will be inside in the kitchen sink. That's right. You know, they make a, um, they make a plucker like, like those for quail that are, uh, it's only like $80. Tabletop one, real small, <laughs> that you can drop them into. Right here? Yeah. What you want to do, baby? Here. Come over here. Now these scissors are very, very sharp. Yeah, your your granddad will get in trouble if you cut yourself with those. Okay, now take open the scissors. Open, open. Put, there you go, close to the body. Clip. Okay, see what Papa does? As I've done figure this out. You just take the scissors, turn the bird around every time. Take the scissors, hold them up to the body, take them, put them back deep in the body, boom come right off. Mm -hmm. I'd do the feet, remember the knees. Mm -hmm. Like where the fur is. Basically right there. Oh. Make sure it hits Mr. James. <laughs> open them up. Open those scissors up as much. There you go. You need to open. The more you open them, the better they are. Yeah, yeah go for it. Yeah, we're saying be careful with the lungs. If you can see that, I don't know if you can, there's a bright red there. Make sure you get the lung. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything the lung gets cooked. I mean, it's not like you're going to eat it anyway because it's full of ribs, but uh, but the um, the lungs are bright red. And if you ever clean the chicken, you can spot the lung because the lung's similar consistency and color. Much easier to clean the insides out of these, I can tell you that. Especially since you lay it wide open. Oh, yeah, these, these are... I mean, for their size, they definitely, I figured they'd be harder because they were smaller. Right. And actually, I think they're easier. Mm-hmm. Maybe you've done two or one or two. Two or three. Two. Two. Yeah. That speed will come. Well, my part is a little simpler. Plus, like I said, I get a rhythm. Mm-hmm. I ain't got a rhythm yet because I haven't done enough of them. So I'll, I'll just pull it apart. And if I'm careful and I don't pull the feathers off the skin, the bird doesn't get too dirty. That's why I keep trying to rinse my hands. <laughs> the bird doesn't get too dirty and keeps everything easier. That's the biggest problem. With, that's the biggest part of this is keeping it, keeping the feathers. Yeah. I'm trying not to break the rib bones. <laughs> yeah, don't hurt the quail. 
That's right. Well, you break the rib bones and make some mess. Said Caden stepped in some, uh, stepped in some comfort, or no? no he stepped ant. in an ant bed. He stepped in an ant bed, and I didn't realize this, but you said comfrey is good for that stuff. Yeah, it's, it grows I once mean, you've planted. I've heard it, of comfrey, but it comes back every year. Um, it grows quickly, and you can separate it. It's almost a weed in the sense that it'll grow that. It grows so it goes yeah. easy, quick. Just very, about throw very it on quick. the ground. And just well, uh, she my, <clears throat> about five years ago, Susan bought a couple roots mm -hmm. and we planted them and just bloom, that, bloom. No, they, they they don't really bloom they just start growing and the yeah. leaves get big and the leaves will get big but you want the base to stock okay and so you snap it off at the bottom of the plant and you just squeeze i then cut it in sections and just squeeze it and clear liquid comes out and put that on the bite if you've got a cut or abrasion no deep wounds of course but mm -hmm. you know minor you scrape yourself put it on there and you'll see a noticeable healing within a day or so. Oh, the cool. ant bites will stop. Caden, ant bites usually within about 15, 20 minutes, they stop itching, don't they? Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah, I didn't realize and that. And it's something that grows grows about anywhere. It's a very hardy plant. can grow in all different parts of the okay. country. Okay. Do you have a tendency to... Okay. Just like chicken, I have a tendency to linger. Now, pull the spine out and then pull everything inside out with it there. I'm going to try something. Put it over here in the gut here. Put it over here in the gut bucket. Hmm, show it to the camera. Quail egg. You know, quail, Caden, you know, quail, the spots on a quail egg, they don't happen till the very end before it pops out of the vent. That's a quail egg. They're blue. They have a blue tint. At least I know on the Caternix they do. They have a blue tint until the very end when they pop out. Uh, no, it, it might still be fertile, <laughs> but you know how quail eggs have all the spots on them, and and, yeah. the, and the, they don't they don't get spots till the very end. That's why it's white. Now, one thing for the camera: if you take your scissors, a sharp pair of scissors, and just snip right there, I found it makes it so much easier. See how easier the skin peels back with that little snip? Mm -hmm. it, instead of because you're not fighting it. Yeah, if somebody wants to do that instead of yeah. Uh, instead just of, yeah. to me, it just makes it so much. The first couple I did, I fought. Hand me one. And I noticed that I'm to this point quicker. Right. Not saying I'm trying to run a, win a race, but anything that I can figure out that makes it simpler and easier. And that does make it, it helps keep from pulling the feathers. I'm still doing it the other way, but I see your point because sometimes doing it the other way, it uh, you pull some feathers loose. Yeah. Like I said, it just makes it the first couple that I did I, I did four or five that away and it seemed like I was mm -hmm. fighting to get to get it open like you know how some chips open really easy and some mm -hmm. of you make a you know. mm -hmm. now this one right here does want to be it wants to be a little pain in the butt with the feathers around the, the rear but I noticed that I don't pay too much attention to it because I notice when you cut the spine out that usually everything yeah comes. most of them come right out yeah and yeah, I noticed that you definitely need to cut the spine all the way past the legs. I was stopping trying to... Yeah, I tried that too. And I think I was stopping too soon. And that's what caused me to rip a couple legs off that I didn't mean to. You will hear me doing a lot of voiceover throughout the rest of this video due to microphone difficulties. Guys, stick with us. Let's take a second so I can show you the differences between a male and a female quail and how you can tell. Female quails are bedazzled is how I remember it. If you look at their chest, they have speckled black marks on their chest with a tan background. The speckled is the bedazzled is how I remember it, so they're very easy to tell. 
put this one back and grab a male here, and you will see that the male has a solid tan goldish brown tip chest. No bedazzle marks, no speckles at all. So we're going to put this back up with a solid tan chested male, and uh, Caden and David are going to grab the rest of the birds, and we're going to take them over to processing. A good side note to remember here is that the males are also the only ones that make any significant noise. They make a beautiful, what I call a harmonic noise. It's uh, beautiful to hear. Um, the females make virtually no noise at all. Take you through step by step one more time with David here. He just made a snip with the scissors into the skin like he likes to do to pull it apart. Now he's pulling it apart at the breast. Uh, gets it pulled apart there. Now David likes to work down from the top from the breast to the legs first whereas I go up around the top first it doesn't really matter you see him pulling the legs out one leg and then uh, he's fixed to pop the other leg out from the skin and the feathers he is now working his way back up the sides of the bird down around where the wings would have been around the sides of the breast there he's working up one side you'll see him twisted around he starts to work up the other side and then as he gets to the top up to where the neck would have been he's coming around he'll come around the top of the bird getting everything pulled loose uh, so that it comes off easier. He works around the backside and he will pull the skin back off of the backside. Uh, you'll see a big pull where it comes off pretty easy. Once he gets around the neck, it comes down, pulls it off of where the vent is. The skin will pull off. He'll toss it down into the uh, gut and feather bucket. And now he'll have um, the vent area and an oil gland that's down there. He just snips that off with the scissors. Now he comes down both sides of the spine. One side first, cuts all the way through and out the back side. Then he'll come down the other side, all the way through and out the back side, and getting most of the remainder of those feathers that are right there, on uh, right there at the back side of the spine on the bottom side. Then he pulls out the guts and the spine, discards them in the bucket, rinses the quail in the rinse bucket, and tosses it into the clean water bucket. So David and I are sitting here talking about what we learned, what made it easier, and um, maybe what we won't do next time and what we will do. What we did realize between the two different sets of quail that we processed is that the longer between the dispatching of the bird and the actual processing where you um, start begin with pulling the skin apart and skinning it, the longer that you wait, the cooler that the body temperature of the bird is. To an extent, you want to wait too long, the easier it is to skin, as it is with most wild game. So if uh, you do it, you know, if you wait just a little bit, it'll skin out easier if the temperature of the birds cools off. The other thing that we learned that's very important, guys, don't use poultry shears. Don't use expensive scissors. The sharper the scissor, you know, quail bones are not tough. They're almost like cartilage. The sharper the scissor so it can snip the bone, but cut the skin at the same time that it can go through the bone. The bone's like a popsicle stick, whatever. If it can handle a popsicle stick and cut the skin at the same time, that is the most important thing because poultry shears and heavy duty scissors, they have no problem handling the bone, but they're not made to cut the skin and the feathers. So continue as we watch Angela do her thing here. All right, so they bring the quill into me and I check them for any feathers, which they're not great about getting all of them off. And I pick all those off and I check the inside and make sure it's all cleaned out. And um, yeah, there's still a lot of feathers as you can see. Some of them are really good, but this one was bad. So I put it in the other sink and I just keep doing that until they're all done. All right, so I'm gonna rinse all of these one last time and I, then I'm gonna dry them all with a paper towel because the more dry they are, the better they vacuum seal, which is how we're gonna store them at the end, which I'll show you here in just a minute. But I'm just gonna do that. I think I like do five or six at a time and then take them over. No, no, I did them all at once and then piled them up on a plate and then took them over to the table. So um, that's what I'm doing right now is just rinsing them, drying them, putting them on the plate, and then I'll wash my hands real good to go to the table. All right, so here we are. I decided to use, I think these are the 11 inch bags. I have some seven inch, I believe, but they were too small. So using the 11 inch bags. And of course you put um, the bag in there and you close it and you seal it. And this um, food saver is a little complicated, but it's okay, it gets the job done. So you seal the bottom and then you open it up and of course check to make sure it's all the way sealed all the way across 
and then you cut it the length you think it needs to be cut. And I'm never good at straight lines, so I have to be pay, pay real close attention. I, I've never been good at straight lines. So then, of course, you put the quill in the bag. I'm thinking I'm doing like five to a bag. Make sure you write on it, because if you don't, you won't know how many you have in the bag and when you did it, and they'll be sitting in the bottom of your freezer, and you'll be in trouble. So you put five in the bag, and that's what I did um, for most of these. Um, I think a couple of them I did like seven or six, because I had a couple extra. But um, most of these I'm doing five in the bag. And then you just put it in the little machine and you have to line it up just right. And then on this one, you have to push the seal and whatever button. And then you, you have to push seal because it, that's the part that don't work quite right. But it does the job, like I said. So now it's all vacuum sealed and it won't get freezer burn and all that. So that's why we like the vacuum sealer. I'm actually probably buying another one, so. All right, here we go. This is the finished product. I'm gonna go put these in the freezer. We have four bags total. All of them have, well, this one has seven and the rest have five. Most of them have five in them. I had one from the first batch that has six. So we had 26 in the first batch, number one. And then in the second batch, we have 5, 10, 15, 22. So I think that's pretty good. A good day. We'll have some meals in the freezer. And I don't know how they taste. So we're going to do also, I don't know how they taste. I think they're going to be good. But I'll do a video on um, how I cook them. I'm going to look up what I'm going to do and figure it out. Hey guys, if you want to see more from us, please like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell and see what we have going on. We love y'all.